ओके सो सी किरशॉप करंट लॉ किरशॉप करंट लॉ वी हैव सीन इन प्रीवियस लेक्चर दैट इज द इन इलेक्ट्रिक सर्किट एट एनी नोड और जंक्शन अल्जेब्रिक सम ऑफ इनकमिंग करंट एंड लिविंग करंट इज जीरो इफ करंट मूविंग टोवर्ड नोड we are going to assume it as positive current moving away from node we are going to consider it as negative okay so uh, here you can see i1 is moving toward node that's why positive and i2 and i3 are moving away from node that's why negative okay so i2 and i3 uh, will be negative so i1 uh, <clears throat> minus i2 minus i3 is equal to 0 okay is the kcl equation up to this we have seen in previous lecture next one is kirchhoff's voltage law so uh, what it said kirchhoff's voltage law in electric circuit in any closed loop algebraic sum of voltage sources and voltage drop is zero okay now uh, this one circuit uh, can everyone see uh, how many voltage sources are here in this circuit two right two, two voltage sources are there v1 and v2 its polarity is marked okay now uh, three resistances are there r1 r2 and r3 okay so uh, you can mark branch current direction also here uh, so i will use conventional direction of flow of current uh, that is current starts from positive terminal of battery okay so that is i1 Uh, and i2 you can represent clockwise also anti clockwise also doesn't matter hmm? here i have represented anti clockwise you can denote i2 clockwise also doesn't matter okay whether i1 i1 will flow clockwise or anti clockwise i2 also will flow clockwise or anti clockwise it depends on values of v1 v2 and values of r1 r2 and r3 okay <clears throat> so uh, here i1 i have denoted clockwise i2 uh, uh, i have denoted anti clockwise both clockwise both anti clockwise one clockwise one anti clockwise any combination you can represent your final answer will be same okay uh, and uh, what's about i3 i3 compulsory you have to flow you have to show downward why because see here uh, both the terminals of battery are negative here this uh, lower points dc f these are at zero potential this one point is at zero potential current always flows from higher potential to lower potential so current flowing through i3 uh, r3 will definitely be downwards you can't say that i will show it upwards okay <clears throat> if through this is uh, downwards means any one of i i1 and i2 must be toward node b any one Uh, at least i1 or i2 any one must be toward b and uh, i3 must be downwards okay so i1 i have denoted clockwise i2 anti clockwise and i3 downwards now with reference to this here i1 toward node b and i2 also toward node b so what will be the value of i3 here in terms of i1 i2 plus i2 Right, I three will be I one plus I two, so nothing but you have applied here KCL, Kirchhoff's current law. Hmm? Whenever I say I three is equals to I one plus I two, nothing but you have applied here KCL. So using KCL represent the branch current direction. That is the first step. Once you represent the branch current direction, uh, represent the polarity of voltage drop across each resistance. I one is flowing through R one. so how much will be the voltage drop across r1 i1 r1 right i1 r1 so it's a dc circuit as i1 r1 is a voltage drop across r1 so it will have some polarity so which uh, which one uh, concept you will use to represent the polarity current always flows from higher potential to lower potential that's why see i1 is moving like this that's why this terminal is marked as positive and another one is marked as negative got it <clears throat> similarly see i2 anti clockwise so here also uh, across r2 i2 r2 will be the voltage drop 
okay and it will have polarity again current always flows from higher to lower potential that's why this terminal positive and this terminal negative same for i3 r3 voltage drop across r3 current flowing through it it in the downward direction so that's why this one positive terminal and this one negative terminal means with reference to branch current direction represent the polarity of voltage drop across each resistance so got it polarity how to represent Yes, huh? Okay. Now, once you represent the polarity, now no need to uh, uh, see at the branch current direction because with reference to branch current direction only, you have represented the polarity of voltage drop across each resistance. Okay. Now, you have to consider the loop direction. Okay. Loop direction, see here. Uh, suppose I am going to assume first one loop A, B, C, D, A. Now in this loop, I am going, uh, I am moving clockwise. Like this I have denoted, means first for first one loop, I am moving clockwise. Loop direction is clockwise. What is it? It's meaning loop direction is clockwise. What is the direction of loop two? Clockwise. Anti-clockwise. Anti-clockwise. Anti -clockwise. Okay, here I have denoted for loop two C, anti-clockwise means for loop two, I'm moving in anti-clockwise direction. You have to, whenever you get asked to solve the sum using Kirchhoff's law, first step is mark branch current direction that we did. Then with reference to this branch current direction, mark the polarity of voltage drop across each resistance that we did. Then next is consider the uh, loop direction, okay? So loop direction, any loop direction you can assume clockwise, anti-clockwise doesn't matter. Both the loop clockwise, both the loop anti-clockwise, any one clockwise, any one anti-clockwise, any loop direction you can assume. I have considered for loop one clockwise. And what is loop one? A, B, C, D, A. Then what this Kirchhoff's voltage law states in electric circuit in any closed loop, algebraic sum of voltage sources and voltage drop is zero. Now in the loop one, A, B, C, D, A, can you tell me how many voltage sources are there in the first loop? How many voltage sources one. are there? Only one. Oh, right. one. Only one is there, that is V1. And how many voltage drops are there? Two, Two voltage Two. drops. First Two. one is I1, R1, and second one is I3, R3. So algebraic sum of voltage sources and voltage drop is zero. So while forming this uh, K KVL equation, you have to assume some sign conventions. And what are these sign conventions? Whatever the loop direction you have selected, this blue colored is nothing but it's a loop direction. Hmm? This one is loop direction. This one is loop direction. So whatever the loop direction you have assumed, whenever uh, you are moving with that loop direction from lower to higher. See here, this is the loop direction. We are moving from lower potential to higher potential for voltage source. So that one voltage source is positive. You have to assume. Same thing for voltage drop also. See, this is the resistance R1. Current flowing through it is I1. This is the direction of I1. So whatever is the voltage drop across this, I1, R1. Whatever is the voltage drop across R1, that is I1, R1, its polarity, what will be its polarity? Current always flows from higher to uh, higher potential to lower potential. That's why this terminal positive, this terminal negative. And this one is the loop direction I have also. So how you are moving? Lower to higher. That's why this one voltage drop also you have to assume positive. So whatever it is, whether voltage source or voltage drop, if you are moving from lower to higher, consider that voltage source as positive. If you are moving from lower to higher, consider that voltage drop positive. And reverse one is negative. Reverse one is negative means what? Whenever you are moving from higher to lower, so negative. Higher to, see here, like this is the loop direction, higher to lower you are moving, so negative. Okay, so what are the sign conventions? Whenever you are move, consider some loop direction and with reference to that loop direction, whenever you are moving from lower to higher, whatever it is voltage source and voltage drop, consider it as positive. And reverse one as negative. Reverse one as negative means what? Whenever you are moving from higher to lower, consider it as negative. Clear? 
okay lower to higher positive and higher to lower negative clear sign conventions yes ma'am yes ma'am ha theek hai okay so abhi ye use karo yahan pe fir abhi dekho um this is the loop direction clockwise this is the voltage source and these two are voltage drop its polarity is marked so in electric circuit in any closed loop algebraic sum of voltage sources and voltage drop is zero now i1 r1 voltage drop i3 r3 voltage drop and v1 voltage source and this is the closed loop and this is the direction now move clockwise whenever i am moving clockwise like this what's about i1 r1 how you are moving higher to lower or lower to higher higher to lower higher to higher to lower Right. To lower. Right. For I one R one, we are moving higher to lower. Means it will be plus or minus. 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 So minus I one R one. What's about I three R three? Minus. Right. Minus. Again, it will be minus. Minus I one R one. Minus I three R three. What's about V one? Plus. Lower. Plus. plus. V1. plus. plus. right because you are moving from lower to higher so plus v1 is equal to 0 so see first one equation plus v1 minus i1 r1 minus i3 r3 is equal to 0 got the first kvl equation how to form kvl equation clear yes ma'am you can yes, use yes, so here what is important to form the kvl equation so whatever the concepts you have learned in 12th that one also you can use hmm? if they are different uh, so only important thing is you have to form the kvl equation okay so whatever the 12th concept uh, you learn differently that also you can apply or this one also whatever i have told right now okay explained right now now see loop 2 i am moving in anti clockwise direction so uh, in loop 2 v2 is the voltage source and two voltage drops are there i2 r2 i3 r3 in second loop see what is the second loop uh, you can start from e e b c f e in this closed loop v2 is the voltage source and i2 r2 and i3 r3 are the voltage drop so move in anti clockwise direction what's about v2 positive positive, positive. positive. because you are moving from lower to higher so positive v2 what's about i2 r2 negative 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 right minus i2 r2 and what's about i3 r3 negative negative right minus i3 r3 okay so v2 minus i2 r2 minus i3 r3 is equal to zero so see second kvl equation v2 Minus I two R two minus I three R three is equal to zero. How to form KVCA, KVL equation? Clear? Got it? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma okay. So uh, you will get asked question on this like this. Read the question. Okay. This is the circuit given. <clears throat> All of you can see uh, the given circuit. Uh, how many voltage sources are there in this circuit? Two voltage sources, right? Ten uh, volt and six volt. Its magnitude is given. Polarity is also given, and the rest five resistances are there. For each resistance, its value is given in ohm two two three one one. Okay. Using question is like this. Using Kirchhoff's laws, find current flowing through three ohm resistance. Okay. So you have been asked to find the current flowing through three ohm resistance using Kirchhoff's laws. or they can ask you using kirchhoff's laws find voltage drop across 3 ohm resistance whenever you get asked to calculate voltage drop across 3 ohm resistance first of all you have to find out the current flowing through this so whatever the current flowing through this into 3 will be the voltage drop across this means in both the cases you have to find out the current flowing through 3 ohm using kirchhoff's laws so whenever you get asked to solve the sum using kirchhoff's law the first step is draw karo circuit as it is given circuit then with reference to uh, means uh, using conventional uh, flow of direction of current uh, you can represent the branch current okay represent branch current direction so here i have represented it i1 clockwise 
and uh, I3 also clockwise. You can represent I1 anti clockwise also. No issue. Huh? So, uh, conventional direction of flow of current, I will use, suppose I1, I will denote clockwise. Then I2 and I3. Once you denote I1 clockwise, I2 and I3, both you can denote anti clockwise. Both you can denote clockwise. Both you can denote one clockwise, any one clockwise, any one anti clockwise. Doesn't matter. Okay. What I have denoted here, I2 flowing through 3 ohm and I3 flowing through 1 ohm, both I have denoted clockwise. Now, I1 is coming like this, I2 is moving like this. So, how much current will flow through 2 ohm? I1 minus I2. Right, I1 minus I2 and it will be downward only because I told you this lower points are at zero potential. So current through vertical branch will be downwards only. I1 minus I2. Suppose I2, I am going to denote like this. Hmm? I2, I am going to denote like this. Then in that case, how much current you will show to through 2 ohm? I1 plus I2. I1 plus I2. Got it? Okay. So I2, you can denote clockwise also, anti-clockwise also, doesn't matter. Then accordingly, this current will change, okay? Uh, now, next thing, I2 is coming like this. I3, I have shown clockwise, I2 also clockwise. So through one ohm, it will be downwards and it will be I2 minus I3, okay? Now, if I have denoted, suppose I3 like this, anti-clockwise. So through one ohm, downward current will be which, how much? I2 plus I3. I2 plus I3. Correct. Mm -hmm. It will be I2 plus I3. Hmm? Okay. So I1 I have denoted like this. I2 also clockwise. So I1 minus I2 downward. Nothing but you have applied here. Kirchhoff's current law. Okay. Second thing, secondly, I2 clockwise. I3 also clockwise. And I2 minus I3 downward. Nothing but here also I have applied Kirchhoff's current law. So the first step in Kirchhoff's law sum is to mark the branch current direction using KCL. That is the first step. What is second step? With reference to this branch current direction, mark the polarity of voltage drop across each resistance. And current always flows from higher potential to lower potential. That one sign convention you have to use. So a voltage drop across this is how much? 2 ohm. What will be the voltage drop across 2 ohm? Two into minus, I1. minus 2 I1. No, no, only value. 2 times I1. Is that right? 2 times I1. Yes, so left side terminal will be positive or negative? This side? Positive. 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 Correct, positive. Because see, I1 is entering like this. That's why this terminal positive and another one negative. Similarly, for 3 ohm, this one will be positive. For 1 ohm, this side will be positive. This 2 ohm, upper 1 positive. For 1 ohm, upper 1 positive. Isn't it? Whatever the dot, that all will be positive. So, see here. What the thing? Can you do this? Mark the polarity of voltage drop across each resistance. Yes, ma'am. Huh? Yes, ma'am. Okay, okay. Now, observe. You have been asked to calculate the current flowing through 3 ohm only. Means I1, I2 or I3 you have been asked to calculate. Which one current you will I2. calculate? I2. Right? I2. Well, question is using Kirchhoff's laws, find out the current flowing through 3 ohm resistance. Means I2 you have to find out. Or find out the voltage drop across 3 ohm. So how much it will be? 3 times I2. So for that also I2 value you have to find out first. Isn't it? Okay, so now here, um, how many number of unknowns? Next step is, first step is mark the branch current direction. Second step is, with reference to branch current direction, mark the polarity of voltage drop across each resistance. Third step, find out the number of unknowns. So how many number of unknown here? Three. Three unknown, right? Because uh, 10 volt, 6 volt given, value of all resistances given. So only I1, I2 and I3. These three are the unknowns. If three unknowns are there, to find out value of three unknowns, how many equations required? 
three equations three equations you in 12 up to 12 you all learned this con concept if three unknowns are there then three equations must be there then only you can find out the values of three unknowns isn't it that's why here uh, we have to form the three kvl equations three kvl equations you have to form is definitely how many number of loops you have to consider here Three loops. Three loops. Three loops, isn't it? So three loops you have to consider here so that KVL you can apply to three loops and you will get the three different equations and then you can find out the value of I1, I2 and I3. Got it? So better way is to select the three smaller loops. I am going to select these smaller loops, isn't it? You can select the larger one also, but better it is to go for three smaller uh, loops. So this one, now select the, so three unknowns, three loops we have selected. The next step is select the loop direction. So here I have denoted all three loops in clockwise direction. Isn't it? You can select all three anti-clockwise. Any one clockwise, any two anti-clockwise, or any two clockwise, any one anti-clockwise, any combination. Your answer, final answer will be same. Okay, so uh, loop direction, next step is select the loop direction. So loop one clockwise, loop two clockwise, loop three clockwise. Then you have to write applying KVL to loop one, A, B, C, D, A. Here I have written A, applying KVL to loop one, A, B, C, D, A. I, am, I have written the loop no, name A, B, C, D, A, nothing but I am moving in clockwise direction. That is its meaning. Or... You can write the statement like this or you can just write applying KVL to loop 1. Do not write, write this loop name and just mark direction like this. Then no need to mark here nodes also. Okay, that will be better option. The second applying KVL to loop 2 and I have denoted here clockwise direction. Means you are moving in clockwise direction for loop 2. So no need to write the loop name. So this is better. No need to write the loop name, then no need to mention your nodes also. Okay. As here it's a first sum, I have denoted nodes also, I have denoted loop name also, but now onwards, no nodes I'll represent and no loop name I'll write directly. I'll mention loop one, loop two, loop three, and here direction. Okay. So this one, this one I'll use. Clear? Okay. First one also you can do, second one also you can do whatever convenient you do it. Okay, so see in the first loop, loop direction clockwise, now move clockwise. So what's about two times I1, positive or negative? Negative. Ha, first loop, ha, everyone concentrate on first loop. So minus two times I1. What's about two times I1 minus I2? Negative. 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 And what's about 10 volt? Positive. 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 So, what, ha, so, in electric circuit, in any closed loop, algebraic sum of voltage sources and voltage drop is zero. 10 volt is a voltage source and the rest two are voltage drops. So, 10 minus 2 times I1 minus 2 times I1 minus I2 is equal to zero. Is the first KVL equation. Here, to form this KVL equation correctly is only the thing. Any concept, whatever the concept, different concept, if you have learned in 12, that you apply and form the KVL equation. Now, all of you can simplify it. See, this is 2 times I1, 2 times I1. Multiply by this minus 2 times I1 inside this bracket. You will get this one. And then further simplify it. This you can add, subtract, depending on the signs. Okay, that mathematics part, all of you know. So, you will get this equation. Take constant parameter on right-hand side. So, simplification of... Up to this, everyone got any difficulty? Take I1, I2, all terms on uh, left side and constant parameter here, phi u, that you take on right side. Up to this, any difficulty? No, ma'am. Okay? okay, first KVL equation done. Similarly, go for loop 2. Now, in loop 2, is there any voltage source? No. No voltage sources there, only voltage drops. Okay, what is the loop direction? Clockwise. So move clockwise. What's about three times I2 plus or minus? Minus. Minus, right. Next is minus three times I2C through this one ohm. Which one current is flowing? 
I2 minus I3. So here upper one is positive, lower one is negative. So it will be plus or minus? Minus. Right. Minus 1 times I2 minus I3. Isn't it? And what's about 2 times I1 minus I2? Plus. 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 Right. Okay. Plus. So minus 3 times I2. Minus 1 times I2 minus I3 plus 2 times I1 minus I2 is equal to 0 is the second KVL equation. All of you uh, solve it in the afternoon once lecture over uh, on your notebook. Everyone how to do the practice. Hmm? Okay. So can you simplify it? Like this? Is equal to 4 by 9. So, 2 times I1 minus 6 I2 plus I3 is equal to 0. This equation you will get. Clear up to this to everyone? Any yes, difficulty? Okay. Now, same thing for the third loop. In third loop, one voltage source is there and two voltage drops are there. So, <clears throat> again, loop direction I have selected here clockwise. You can select anti-clockwise also, no issue. So, move clockwise. What's about 1 times I3? Minus. Right. Minus I3. Minus 1 times I3. 6 volt? Minus. minus. Right. Minus, minus. Minus 6. Minus 6. And what's about 1 times I2 minus I3? Plus. Plus. Very Plus. good. Is equal to 0. So minus 1 times I3. Minus 6 plus 1 times I2 minus I3 is equal to 0 is the second equation. See, second equation. You can simplify it. You will get I2 minus 2 times I3 is equal to 6. So, all three KVL equations got it? Hmm? Yes, this is the second. This is the third one. And this is first. Now, these three equations. You can write in matrix form that you have done in, I think, 12 also. Can you write it in matrix form? zoom in. See, second equation. Uh, I1, I2 or I3 ke suffix dekho. Suppose third one dekhte paine. Third one equation. Uh, I1 not there. So, that's why 0 is here. See, I2 ka uh, ye kya hai? Multiplier. 1 hai. Plus 1 hai. So, plus 1 here. What is the multiplier of I3? Minus 2. So, here minus 2. Then I1, I2, I3 is equal to, is equal to in this matrix. Next one. Here 6 is there. 6. 6. So, third equation, how written in the matrix form got it? Similarly, write down the second one also. See the second one. Uh, I1 multiplier is plus 2. So, see here plus 2. Then, Minus 6 plus 1. Minus 6 plus 1. And is equal to 0. That's why here 0. Similarly, first equation. First equation kya hoga abhi? Dekho yaha pe. 2 hai minus 1 hai. Means 2 times I1 minus I2 is equal to 5. I3 0 likha hai means 0 nahi hai. See. 2 times I1 minus I2 is equal to 5. So, can you write 3 equations in matrix form like this? How to, how to simplify three equations now to find out I1, I2, I3 that I am telling to you. Okay. So, uh, three equations you can write in matrix form and then you can go for Cramer's rule. You can go for Cramer's rule. <coughs> Okay, so what is, uh, two options are there. You can go for, here now what you have to do, this is matrix A and this is matrix you can consider as X and this is matrix B. Now you have to simplify it to find out the value of I1, I2, I3. Two options are there. One is Cramer's rule. It will take time because, uh, uh, or another option is directly in, um, in calculator, you can enter matrix A, you can enter matrix B and uh, once I enter matrix A and matrix B in calculator, how to find out value of X? Or while doing calculations, how you find out value X? Uh, 
here x is equal to what b into a inverse right a inverse into b or b into a inverse one and the same thing okay a inverse into b so using calculator better option okay because it takes less time but cramer's rule also you can use how you have to use cramer's rule ye a jo matrix hai whatever this a matrix it is called as del del its determinant you find out 18 how to find out determinant all of you have learned in 12 right 12 mein hua hai na to find out the determinant yes ma'am okay yes ma'am so using calculator also i think directly you can find out determinant so find it out del that will be del now we are interested in finding out current flowing through 3 ohm which one current is flowing through 3 ohm i2 so using cramer's rule formula of i2 is del 2 by del now del is nothing but the determinant of this a matrix and what is del 2 whatever is this a matrix that is del matrix its second column you replace by b matrix and that will be del 2 got it see here uh, ye jo del matrix hai its first and third column as it is only the second column get replaced by b matrix and that is del 2 what is del 2 clear everyone Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You have to find out I two. So it is del two by del. So del two will be what? Whatever del, its second column only you replace by B, B matrix. The rest two will be as it is. Find out the determinant that is eight. So eight by eighteen that is del two by del. Point four 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 ampere will be the I two. Similarly, what will be I one? Suppose you have been asked to find out the value of I one, then it will be. Yes, del one by del, and I three will be del three by del. So what is del three? First two columns as it is, and this one column replaced by B matrix. That will be del three. Clear Cramer's rule. Is this clear to you? Cramer's rule. Any difficulty with Cramer's rule? Yes, ma'am. No difficulty, na? Del one by del, del two by del, del three by del, I one, I two, I three. Now another option is directly in calculator you enter matrix A, you enter matrix B, and then just say A inverse into B. You will get directly value of matrix uh, this uh, three values. You will get first one will be I one, second one will be I two. And third one will be I three. Now, how you have to enter the matrix in calculator C? Uh, if you are having calculator uh, on four digit, make it on calculator and on four digit uh, above written in yellow color M A T. So shift का भी color L O है. So shift press shift and press four. So your calculator will be in हाँ नहीं ये पहले आपको क्या करना पड़ता है मोड सिलेक्ट करना पड़ता है सो so, आपके कैलकुलेटर पे मोड का बटन है एम ओ डीई लिखा है ग्रे कर गो ऑन प्रेसिंग इट सो व्हेन यू कैन से मैट गो ऑन कंटिन्यूसली क्लिकिंग इट वंस यू विल फाइंड एम एम ए के नीचे डिजिट देखो राइट नाउ इन माय कैलकुलेटर इट शोइंग टू सो आई विल प्रेस टू मीन्स माई कैलकुलेटर विल बी इन मैट मोड मैट्रिक्स मोड ओके नॉर्मली आपका कैलकुलेटर डेग मोड में चाहिए ओके वंस यू स्विच ऑन इफ इट इज नॉट इन डेग मोड मेक इट इन डेग मोड ओके देन गो ऑन प्रेसिंग द मोड बटन एज यू गो ऑन कंटिन्यूसली प्रेसिंग इट्स आई थिंक थ्राइस यू प्रेस यू विल फाइंड एम एटी एम एटी के नीचे देखो कौन सा डिजिट है सपोज टू इज रिटर्न प्रेस टू देन यूर कैलसी विल बी इन मैट्रिक्स मोड ओके देन Uh, four digit. If you observe on your calculator above it, mat is written. So that mat written is in yellow color. Shift is also in yellow color. Press shift and four digit. Once I press shift and four digit, what I am displaying, what I am getting on screen, uh, one two three digits I am getting. And above it, uh, above it written dimensions. For above one written dimensions, above two written edit, above three written matrix. If I am going to press the forward arrow in calculator, above one I am getting determinant and above two I am getting transpose. Okay, so first one uh, I will enter dimensions. Okay, uh, 
for that i one digit is written so i'll select one once i press one I am getting on screen one two three above one A above two B above three C. So I am selecting first matrix A. For that I will press one. Okay. Now it is asking me for dimensions. So I will enter M. It is uh, what are the dimensions of A? What are the dimensions three, of three A? Three by three. Three by three. three. So it is asking right now for me M by M. So M it is asking. I press three. Will press equal and by default it is one is showing. I you can edit it. Just click on three. Now I have set the dimensions of a three by three. Now it is asking me for a one one. What is the value of a one one? Two two you enter. Then it will ask for a one two. Then a one three. Then it will ask for a two one. So on. Enter like this matrix A. Enter matrix B also and then. Again the same thing. Shift matrix you press, and then uh, matrix you have to select. Select A and say inverse of it, and then press into multiplication sign, and then select matrix B. So directly you will get I one, I two, and I three. Okay. So how to enter the matrix in calculator? How to do A inverse into B using calculator? All these things. Watch our video on YouTube. And get the things. If still observe videos are available on YouTube. If observing YouTube video, you are not getting the things. You please tell me. I will make video on my own and will share with you. Got it? Take it as a homework. All of you can do that. Yes, ma'am. Ha, because abhi jo yes, maine bola, wo abhi main apko calculator nahi dikha sakti from my end, isn't it? So what you do? Uh, you please watch video on uh, YouTube. Uh, how to enter matrix in calculator and how to do A inverse B. Huh? Okay. Say how to enter matrix A and matrix B in uh, calculator and then how we can do A inverse B. Easy it is. Huh? Okay. Even if you handle that whatever instructions I gave you now shift and that mat function. Uh, these instructions are sufficient because mobile also you use user friendly rate is abhi ye nowadays right i3 now once you get i2.444 ampere uh, can you find out voltage drop across 3 ohm what will be the voltage drop across 3 ohm 3 into i2 right 3 into i2 that is 3 into 0.444 ampere hmm That which volt will be the voltage drop across I two, or you may get us find out the power consumed in three ohm resistance. Uh, all of you know the formula of DC power. What is the formula of DC power? V into I. V is equal to I. Ohm's law is what? What is Ohm's law? V equal to I R. V is equal yeah. to I R. Put this value over here. So what power equation you will get? P is equal to V I is equal to V square by R is equal to I square by R square into R. Any of these three formula you can use to calculate the power. Here current we know, uh, resistance we know. So I can use I square R, isn't it? Okay. So power formula is V into I is equal to I square R is equal to V square by R. Any of the three formula you can use. Put V is equal to I R in this equation. You will get it. Suppose I am replacing V, I'll get I square R. If I am replacing I as V by R, so I'll get V square by R. Isn't it? ठीक है? So can you calculate power in watt? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Got the sum? Any difficulty in this sum? No, ma'am. Okay, very good. <clears throat> Now see another numerical on Kirchhoff's voltage law. See here. Uh, now everyone, please concentrate. Uh, common things are there. Whatever we have seen in first sum. Uh, uh, now uh, I mean steps are common. Uh, what is the title? Read the sum using Kirchhoff's law. Find the current flowing through four ohm resistance for given circuit. This is the four ohm resistance. 
through this you have been asked to calculate the current using kirchhoff's laws now if you observe this circuit how many voltage sources are there one only only one, one. that is the 20 volt isn't it 20 volt voltage source is there and the rest all are resistances 3 ohm 2 ohm 4 ohm 2 ohm 3 ohm and here you have been asked to calculate the current flowing through 4 ohm or you may get asked calculate the uh, voltage drop across 4 ohm or power consumed by 4 ohm or any of the resistance okay so uh, uh, using kirchhoff's laws only uh, so uh, same thing that first thing is represent the branch current direction draw circuit as it is represent the branch current direction here i is there i1 is there i2 like this so i3 if flowing like this then obviously i1 minus i2 will flow through 2 ohm uh, so here um, i2 coming toward node c i3 also coming toward node c so whatever the current flowing through this 3 ohm will be I2 plus I3, isn't it? Hmm? And this is I2 plus I3 and this is I1 minus I3 moving toward node D. So whatever this one will be I3, I3 will cancel. So I1 plus I2. So this I is nothing but I1 plus I2. See here I1 like this i2 like this means obviously this i is i1 plus i2 branch current direction got it any variable you can use uh, current direction accordingly you can show means accordingly means i3 here it is shown like this you can show reversals doesn't matter hmm? got it or uh, once i reaches like this only one voltage source is there then obviously I1 if flowing like this, then I2 also will flow like this. Obviously, it's obvious. But I3, I3 any, in any direction. Right now, it's not fixed. I cannot see just uh, observing the values. I can't decide whether I3 will flow forward or reverse. Here it is represented at forward. You can uh, represent uh, reverse also. Doesn't matter. Okay? Okay. So, any difficulty in the representing the branch current direction in this sum? No, ma'am. Okay. No, ma'am. That all of you can do now. In this sum, here I is I2 plus I1 plus I2. Here also I is I1 plus I2. Now, can you tell me how many unknowns are here in this circuit? Number of unknowns? Two, three, four, five. How many? Hmm? Four unknowns. Three, three. Fourth one is uh, I. Once you get I1 and I2, you can easily find out I. So what I will say, only three unknowns are there. I1, I2 and I3. Isn't it? Right? Three unknowns yes. are there. Number yes, of unknowns, three, I1, I2, I3. If three unknowns are there, how many equations will be required? Three. Three KVL equations means you have to consider the three loops. Isn't it? So three loops, any three loops you can select. Suppose this one, the first one, this is second one I am selecting. Now third one, all of you can observe is this loop. Okay, means which one? Mm -hmm. This one is the third loop. Now rather than this third loop, what I'm going to do, I'll select this one suppose, first two as it is. And third one, suppose I'm going to select this one. A larger one. Which one? A, C, D, B, A. So, will I get the answer? Ye jo dikhaya hai third loop. I am not going to consider this one. And I will be considering A, C, D, B, A. So, can I get with this three loops? First or second common hai. Third one mene A, C, D, B, A select kiya hai. So, with this three, will I get the answer or not? And the variables are same in, in the loop. So, I think yes. <clears throat> uh, no, you will not get because uh, if you observe three loops, whatever I have considered. In first loop, is there any voltage source or current source there? In first no, loop, no. In second one? 
no voltage mm -hmm. source or mm -hmm. current source and in third one no voltage source is there so what does it mean in all the three equations whatever that b matrix when you write a is a into x is equals to b for this b all the three components you will get zero and once when the matrix b is zero can you find out i1 i2 and i3 because then a inverse b nothing means you will not get b matrix is zero so you will not get the answer you can't calculate i1 i2 i3 means what is the conclusion here third one means at least out of the three loops one loop must contain what at yeah, least one loop source ah, right right at least out of the three loops one you have to select at least one loop you have to select with a voltage source this one point is only the new here otherwise the rest thing common whatever we have seen in previous sum take this sum as a homework okay hmm? solve it in the afternoon all of you or before next lecture solve it so represent branch current direction once you represent the branch current direction with reference to that mark the polarity see here polarity is represented then apply kvl sign conventions form the equation same thing you do for second loop and the third loop see for the first loop if you observe here 0 0 and for the third loop 20 is here huh? at least one loop with voltage source you have to select then calculate del 3 by del will be the i3 now here answer you are getting minus 0.625 ampere what does it mean still you will get reverse, the full uh, mark reverse ha. direction right right what is its meaning i3 whatever here selected is forward forward means from b to c like this you have assumed those student uh, if some students are assuming suppose from start like this from c to b then they will get plus plus 0.625 so to both the students will get the full marks if you are getting answer negative just you have to mention whatever the assumed direction is wrong instead of c to b uh, means uh, instead of b to c i3 will flow from c to b that is only you have to write clear so students if assuming b to c they will get answer minus 0.625 those students from starting assuming c to b they will get answer plus 0.625 ampere both the students will get full marks only those who are getting negative answer just mention whatever the direction assume of i3 from b to c is wrong i3 will flow from c to b that's it now you got the i3 also 0.625 ampere so how much will be the voltage drop across 4 ohm 4 into 0.625 will be the voltage drop and how much will be the power i square r that is i square means 0.625 its square into 4 is the power consumed so got the sum on kirchhoff's laws any difficulty in solving the sum on kirchhoff's laws Yes, any difficulty? No, ma'am. Okay, okay. Can everyone see? Ah, huh? this one also. Please practice at home. Ah, huh? or anyone you are interested, one more addition. Uh, we'll see the superposition theorem. Here we have finished with uh, numericals on Kirchhoff's law. Ah, uh, in next lecture we are going to solve the sum using superposition theorem. Okay. So can I end?